um, I mean, I was the fat kid, and the one episode that really blew me away was when Steve and the writers, um, Tim and Douglas, uh, they got together and they wrote an episode where uh, I fall in love with Dina. And to me, as a, you know, a, a, what the fuck? I'm not eating a candy bar. Why are y'all laughing? I'm being fucking serious. Sorry about my cursing, but, you know, I need to let it out. Yeah, welcome, kids. <laughs> and then they wrote an episode where I got to, to fall in love with Dina. And um, just to me, like, growing up and starting to like women at that age, and it was just amazing because I felt like maybe they gave a real story to the, the, the chubby kid or whatever, and it was just an amazing episode. The acting and the heart of my character came out by the end of it, and then the Dina, the good-looking woman, she kind of like enjoyed it and might have given me a date in real life. So it was just a great episode, and I wanted to thank you guys for putting that in, in, our, in our show, because that really proved that we were a standout show, that we didn't just sell out. <laughs> Is we have to we'll have to speed along a little bit because we're actually about to wrap up here. Yeah. Then, yeah. We're kicking us out. Pretty soon. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, go ahead and get to Telly it. Telly was cool. Being Telly was cool. I, I liked working out a lot. I, I stayed, uh, you know, I, I stayed and danced and uh, played dodgeball and stuff now. So I don't know if that had to do with me personally or if that character actually rubbed off on me. But love sports and all that good stuff and being tough. And I love playing that that kind of role a lot. And, I, and in my own life, too. So it was just, I don't know, it's, it's very synergetic. I am Bobby Budnick. Thank you. <laughs> I am Bob. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, the truth be told, I, I grew up with four brothers. And the kind of slapstick that I was lucky enough to fall into with this character and Steve presenting him to me was really fortuitous because that kind of stuff we did all the time growing up. It was the Three Stooges. It was... Evan Costello, it was Tim Conway, it was Dick Van Dyke. For me, I, I think that's missing from today's comedy. And I, I, got, I feel really lucky that I got a chance to do that. We tried to show kids doing kid stuff, but I think these guys did a really great job. Uh, and I want to thank all of them uh, for, for being here. And I, I want to thank Devin for, for putting us all together. I want to thank you for hosting this thing as well. Archetype. I was, they just actually pulled me off the street and put me in front of the camera. Was just, <laughs> <laughs> you can finish nothing. Now, I actually think the genius of the show um, was, it was Nickelodeon, we were in the days of MTV, and Slavi, to his credit, was always pushing the cast and pushing the crew and, and, and our production staff as to, how do we make this unique? How do we take these music video sensibilities, this single camera type of show, uh, and how do we bring that really to, 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 you know, to, to the market, put it, and make this show uh, different? And I think that's really, really why the show clicks. And it was, you know, Steve pushing everybody, making sure that we were doing something different and unique, and it was great. The other thing is, Mr. Spanakopita came from our caterer who literally every day for some reason would serve Spanish comedy. That's, that's one of my favorites. I think we have one. Well, do you have it quick? Quick. Yeah? Real quick. Do it. Yes, another Camp on a Water shirt. Woo! This is a three-part question. <laughs> but hey, Danny, I know you do lots of voiceover work, and you were a stoop kid on Hey Arnold. Who would win in a fight, Bobby Budnick or stoop kid? <laughs> well, one's a fucking cartoon. I know. <laughs> Set and screw each other like uh, behind the scenes. Did you have camaraderie and you know put shaving cream in those shoes or something. I gave you the last question, man. <laughs> you gonna ask somebody if a cartoon character could be alive? Put the other Montana Max will beat them all. So I'm just <laughs> so, uh, so I guess yeah. Any final any final thoughts or, or of being on the set or the experience? I, or I just want to ask. I you know. I look out here, or we look out here, and I see a median age, kind of, but there's some flexibility in that, and it crosses over generations and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, I drive through in and out and the dude stops me and goes, I think I know you. <laughs> you know, that happens all the time, and it's generally in, in, in a range of, you know, 22 to 30-year-olds now. So I'm just kind of curious if those of you with children or those of you with older, you know, parents, watched it with you or if it was just click this middle 
this middle generation sort of thing. It, it's it, curious to me. Yeah. Just a Well, I, I don't know if you, many of you know this, but this would this all happened, and this is our first panel. We don't know if we're ever going to have have another. But Devin Whitehead is a fan. And he found us all on Facebook through the internet and did his job and begged us to show up and one person after another decided they're gonna come and show up and he put it all together. This is the gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. 